Welcome to this episode of John's Models, sponsored in part by Athern. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I install a DCC decoder and speaker into this Athern SD70. I should mention that to get the shell off the frame, you gently pull straight up while holding the fuel tank area. Just like most N-scale diesels, there's no need to remove other parts. The decoder I've selected for this installation is an ESU Loke Sound Select Direct Micro. It's narrow, and it's also shaped a lot like the factory light board, so it should fit pretty easily. To get the decoder ready, I'll first solder LEDs to it. I use paste flux on the contact pads and also on the LED leads so that the solder flows to where I want it. The decoder has built-in resistance, so you don't have to bother with adding a resistor to the circuit. The only thing you have to be careful about is ensuring that the negative and positive leads are soldered to the proper spots on the board. They're labeled on the board, so that's not too hard. While the iron's still hot, I'll go ahead and pre-tin the contacts on the board that I'm most likely to end up using. That would be the track power pickups, the speaker contacts, and the contacts for the motor. Now the decoder's ready. I can remove the factory light board and take the mechanism apart. I have to loosen one Phillips head screw on each end. Once these are loose, it should be able to be unwedged. Yeah, see how I just pushed it back because these little pieces here shove under little slots on each side of the frame here. So once I get that out, there it is. Something else worth mentioning is that once the frame is loose enough, everything will fall out and you have to watch out because this bushing is part of a, I don't know if you want to call it a device, whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a setup that where the bushings go, one goes in this hole here on half of the frame, the other one goes up here. And then if these aren't in, and the frame has touch, it will create a short and that'll fry your board. So you have to make sure to keep all these parts together and don't lose any of it. And also put the trucks away into my tray up here. And as you notice, as I'm, as I'm taking everything apart here, the motor and assembly and all that's fallen out. So I'm just gonna put all this stuff and up in my tray here and uh, one thing that's worth knowing is all these pieces only go together one way. Now I'm videotaping this whole process, so if I get lost and have to figure something out later, I'm okay because I have it on, on video. If you are not working with a video, which I would imagine most people probably aren't making videos when they're doing this, then you might want to take pictures or take notes of how things came apart. I may refer back to my video to make sure I'm putting things back together. Also, I mentioned about these hex nuts here. I'm going to try to poke those through. Here we go. You can see they, they just poke, poke right out. Just get something small. So I have my tray full of parts. And they're all in there. Nothing came off without me catching it and putting it in there. And I have my frame. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to put some painter's tape on it just to hold it together. So when I come back, all this stuff will be gone. And I'm going to leave this intact. This is the front, by the way. I'm going to leave this intact uh, because it is a light shield for the LED. And because of the way I have the LED mounted, it'll be fine the way it is. All right, so by professional machinist standards, this is probably very crude, but you'll see I removed all the stuff I said I was gonna remove here. So there's a nice, big, flat, empty space. And it also creates a little bit of extra space for the speaker back here too, toward the back. So here we go. I'm going to hardwire the electrical pickup by soldering a black wire on the fireman side and a red wire on the engineer side, that is, on each of the trucks. 
So the reason I'm using black on the fireman side and red on the engineer side is because that's the NMRA standard. The uh, red is supposed to go on the right side when you're looking at the locomotive facing forward from behind it. So I'm uh, going to go ahead and put those wires on. There's no point really to showing this. It's just a little dot of solder here and then you attach a wire to it and then you need to find a way to thread it up. So when I'm putting the frame back together, I'll show you where I thread these. It's a few minutes later and I have the trucks wired now. I have a black wire coming from the fireman side here, black wire from the fireman side here, and then red from the engineer on each side. So these are ready to be put back on. So I'm getting to the point where I can start putting the locomotive back together. Something else I have to do before I put the locomotive back together is to tin and attach a an orange wire on the fireman side and a gray wire on the engineer side of the motor. So I'm going to do that now. I'm ready to seat the motor back in. And I'm going to put the mechanism back together here. And uh, luckily, they make these in a way that you really can only put it together one way. Otherwise, it just won't go together at all. So what you're looking at is essentially the only way this can be put back together, period. And it should look something like this. Again, these little bushings are extremely important. If you do not have these bushings and the frame makes contact with itself, you know, left and right sides, it creates a short in the model that will fry your decoder. So make sure you have the bushings. See how I routed the gray wire along the outside of the frame here? And I'm going to do this off camera because it's a little tricky to do on camera. I'm going to put the uh, screws back in. All right, so I started the screws, but I did not put them all the way in yet because I have to put the trucks back on. So to do that, I'm going to make sure that my red power, track power wire comes up on the engineer side, right? Because this is the front. And the black has to come up on the other side. These basically just kind of snap back on as long as you haven't tightened the frame too much. If they don't push in, then that means that the frame's too tight. And you just have to loosen it a little bit. And then once you have the trucks back in, you can tighten the frame a little bit here. Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be ultra tight, but it does have to stay together. So I'm always of the mind that you shouldn't tighten the crap out of anything on any on anything, not just models, but really on anything. Tightening the crap out of things usually wears them out faster, and it's not always not always necessary. I would say even usually not necessary. So here's what we have: track power, fireman side. Track power, engineer side, and then you have your motor leads, positive and negative, here, and I'm going to put some double-sided foam tape down. Then the decoder is going to go on kind of like this on top of that tape. Then I'm going to solder black to a power contact, red to a power contact, probably these back here. And then I'm going to do the same up here on these that I've already tinned. I'm just going to connect my track power to those. So it's really a simple process. All right, got my double-sided tape down. I'm going to put the decoder here like so. Just press it into place. And something cool that this is doing is it's providing a little bit more height here for my speaker that I'm going to put in. So, but that's how you fit the decoder in. And really it's just a matter of making the connections at this point to the decoder from the track power and so forth. 
I'm using a 10 millimeter speaker I got from a seller on eBay for the sound in this model. And without modifying the frame more than I have, there isn't enough space to create a really legitimate sound enclosure. So I'm sticking the speaker to a piece of O20 styrene just to give it something to reverberate off of. This is a trick I've learned from someone on YouTube and I can't remember who it was offhand or else I'd give credit to him. It looks funny and the sound isn't really optimal, but the important thing is that it will fit into the limited space that's available. All right, so I got the speaker there. I've managed to thread it with the capped on tape under the decoder. The important thing is to make sure that the speaker is insulated against the bottom of the decoder because if your speaker touches the bottom of the decoder, it will most likely create a short because the speaker is made out of metal on that side. So you put the capped on tape to prevent that short uh, stick it down and I've threaded the uh, speaker wires one to either side of here do you see how that's set up and I have to solder them down to the contacts right there so this is almost done I'm gonna make the last connections here to the speaker and then we'll put this on a track and test it see if it sounds and runs okay okay I've checked all the connections. They're all made. They're all solid. It's time to put it on the track and see if it works. Okay, so the first thing I do is I put it on the track and I just tell my Loke programmer to read the decoder information. And as you can see, it made a little, little motion there in the motor and the lights are flashing. So, and it's coming back as Loke Sound Select Direct Micro. So yeah, everything seems to be hooked up properly. So I'm going to go into my cab control. I have a light. I have sound. And it travels in the direction that the light's on. Cool. Now I just have to load the sound set into the decoder using the Loke programmer and tape things down, neaten things up, and put the shell back on and this model will be done. I'll be back when the sound's loaded. I'd say it sounds pretty good. I'm gonna tape down the wires and put the shell back on. First, I'll tape down the wires and I'll show you what I did to make everything fit. Then we'll put the shell back on and go give this thing a real test run. All right, so I got the wires all taped down. And really what I, the most important thing I was trying to do is just make sure that they're as thin Everything's as thin as possible because it's a very narrow body on this model. And so I taped it all down with the capped on tape and made sure it's stuck real good. 
checked all the clearances for movement on these things and it's all good so it's time to put the shell back on I think we can go test it now. Looks and sounds good. So there you have it, another successful N-Scale DCC and sound installation. I plan to do a similar video in the near future, but next time we'll make room for a speaker enclosure that'll make it sound a lot better. I want to thank the South Bay Historical Railroad Society for use of their N-Scale layout, and I'd also like to point out that I'm still pretty new at this, but I try it anyway, and if I can do it, you can too.